Hello Scorpio, this is Tanya from Sarva Yoga and I help you navigate your life. Today it's time for your weekly tarot reading from November 8th to 15th and I will draw three cards from three different decks. For money I'm going to use Esther Hicks cards, for love I'm going to use the Moon Oracle and for the general life, I will take the Lightseer's Tarot. You can always see down here in the line the timestamp so that you know when the shuffling ends and when the reading starts. I want to thank you for already more than 900 subscribers and you can of course always like, comment and share. Now let's start with a little Palo Santo smudging and then let's go right into shuffling and into your reading. Have fun! So Scorpio, today we are going to see what's up in the week from November 8th to 15th. For the life, we are going to take the Lightseer's Tarot, for money, the Esther Hicks Law of Attraction cards, and for love, the Queen of the Moon Oracle. Now let's start with a little Palo Santo smudging, just in order to cleanse the air a little. And then let's see what's there for you, Scorpio. Life in general, weekly tarot. Angels and spirit guides, please let me know what's in store for the Scorpios for the week from November 8th to 15th. Scorpio, please, November 8th to 15th. Okay, number one, the devil. <laughs> okay, starting out with a little temptation here and passion. What else do we have for the Scorpios? Okay, we've got the Emperor. Ooh, powerful, powerful and strategic. This one also wanted to jump. It's the Seven of Wands, nice very powerful cards this week. Anything else for Scorpio, please? November 8th to 15th. Anything else? Okay. And we've got the Knight of Wands. Wow, that's a lot of fire. I mean, look at these cards. Orange, red, orange, and two wands, the Emperor and the Devil. Wow. <laughs> now, if this isn't talking about passion, creativity, and also power, Wow. <laughs> now let's see what's coming out for love, emotions, relationships. What do we have there? Angels and spirit guides, please let me know for Scorpios, November 8th to 15th. What's going on in their love and relationship life, please? Love and relationship for Scorpios. Weekly reading, November 8th to 15th. Okay, self-reflection, nice. Now, last but not least, the money tarot. Let's see what's going on here. Money tarot cards. Please let me know for Scorpio. Weekly reading, what's going on with their money? November 8th to 15th, what's going on? Whoopa, there we go. And we have Ooh, love and appreciation. Very nice. Okay, we are done shuffling and now we will go right into your reading. So the first two cards that fell were two major arcana cards, the devil and the emperor. The devil has the 15 and the emperor has the number four, in case you want to Google the number. So with the devil, it's uh, you can see here on the card that the devil is pulling you on strings. So this card is reminding you, take your power back. The devil cannot have any power over you. He's just somebody who is 
uh, tempting you, seducing you, but you have the, the key in your own hands by just saying no to whatever he offers you. So take your power back. Don't let the devil um, push your buttons. So if you encounter any people in this week that want to push your trigger buttons, then just keep calm, stay above it, don't even react. Better to even respond logically and calmly. Don't freak out like the devil would like you to see. You know, the devil is really feeding on your energy when you get angry and <laughs> all fed up with people. But you can just easily um, get escape because you see these tiny little strings he has here. It's very easy for you to just take these strings back and say, uh-uh, I'm not going to play with you this time. And you will manage to do that because the emperor is somebody who takes his power. This is someone in a position of full power. They won't let anybody tell themselves what to do. They, uh, You see them sitting on a chess board with a chess figure and they are the boss of it because they have a lot of logical and clear thinking. They have a very strong intellectual mind so they can really stay calm and cool and they know what to say. And sometimes it's best to say nothing. The way I see you here is that you just sit back and let the other people push your buttons and you will be like, mm -hmm, okay, fine. You won't even react because you're in such a position of power. You're totally fine with everything. You won't even let them get close to you. You know what I mean? So then you had two cards of the ones. The ones are fire energy. Um, so this is a very, very good sign because all of your cards are extremely positive. You can see it on the colors. There is a lot of orange, red and pink. So these are positive, positive cards. Um, so you with the seven of ones, you have a success and a victory because you can see here that other people with their ones are trying to poke you. Yeah, but you sit there like all peacefully. You're like, you can poke me all day long. I won't react. I'm in my power and you really have your, your light here. So that means you shine your light out into the world and people see it. And some people will get a little jealous and they will try to poke you, <laughs> but you won't let anyone destroy your peace. Um, then you have the Knight of Wands. You see, she's very, very happy. So uh, you guys will be absolutely in your power and totally fine and full of success and very happy because what you do is something that you have passion for. You really love what you do. You love your job, whatever it is. If you're at home, let's say you're a stay-at-home mom or dad, you love it. And if you're at work, you love it. So whatever you do here, you're absolutely in your uh, element. This is where you belong. This is where you say, I beat my own drum and I'm making my own rhythm. And all of you other guys, you have to accept that. So this is a very beautiful energy of passion, creativity, loving what you do. And also you're really a master at what you do. I mean, come on, you're completely in power here. So whatever comes up to you, I mean, the devil will try knock your door. We can see it here with the little ones trying to poke you, but uh, he won't have any chance because look at this very calm and secure person, very calm and secure person. So obviously you're just laughing it off <laughs> when somebody is trying to take away your power or to marginalize or minimize your, your abilities, then you're going to be like, uh, uh, try somewhere else <laughs> because I'm so sure about my light. I'm so sure of what I'm doing here. I'm perfectly fine. For love and relationships, you have self-reflection, which is the number 17. And I will read from the booklet what it says. Self-reflection. Be curious about your own nature. Choose to turn inward to quietly contemplate who and what you are and what you want. The more you know about yourself, the more you're able to steer yourself well. Know what you believe and why, yet be open to the development of new beliefs and ways of being. I'm not afraid to look deeply at myself in all aspects. Both scientists and spiritual practitioners believe there is much benefit to be had in self-reflection. The process involves us thinking about what is happening, how we react and make sense of it. It exposes our strengths and weaknesses and gives us information to make changes if we choose to. It gives a small 
respite in the busyness of life and allows our brain to make some sense of the chaos we experience each day. A self-reflection is something we all would benefit from doing, don't we? First, self-reflection requires us to slow down somewhat and turn our awareness inward, something that does not come naturally to some and especially not to the highly extroverted. Starting small and maybe getting assistance with someone else as a guide can solve this. Second, some people are not sure exactly how to self-reflect and so do not try. To change this, examine the various ways to self-reflect during a regular five-minute recap of the day as you commute home or before dinner. Sit quietly and think about all that has happened and your reactions to it on this moon every moon cycle. Record how you feel each day. There are many ways to self-reflect and one of them will suit you. Third, some people self-reflect, but when they do, they don't like the feelings of vulnerability, anger, guilt, or even defensiveness. This incurs. Why go there when it isn't pleasant? Here is where we grow our self-responsibility. Short-term pain will, con will certainly be wrong long-term gain. <laughs> Sorry. Short-term pain will certainly be worth long-term gain if we do not ignore the elephant in the room. A regular practice of self-reflection allows us to intercede before problems get too big. We can, for example, catch ourselves before something gets way out of hand. We can apologize and make amends to someone for our mistake. We can catch negative patterns and stop them in their tracks. The theme of warning Gibbons moons, of which this is the first, is the process of self-reflection and building resilience. The companion stone or medal is the tiger's eye. So I think it's quite clear. If you're in a relationship, then sit down and talk about it. Think about where you could make your relationship better, where you can spend more quality time with each other, and which steps you could take as a couple in order to improve your relationship. And if you're single, self-reflect on what you want in a relationship. How should your partner be like? What should he have or do? Or what should his moral standards be about? And then what are your moral standards about what is an absolute no-go for you and what is very important to you. The more clear we get about these things, the better we can navigate the relationships in our lives and also the relationships to ourselves. For your money, you have love and appreciation are identical vibrations. So on the text on the other side of this card, um, it says that this card is a reminder for you to mind the way this, you speak about your past, about your present and about your future. So if you are asked to tell about your past, then focus on what you appreciate and love about your past rather than what your failures were. So focus always on the positive in order to attract more of it. So these are law of attraction cards. I personally do not believe in the law of attraction, but if you do, and I know that many people do, then this is your advice to keep um, focusing on the positive for attracting more of the positive in your life. So mind the way of how you use the words, yeah, the words of your own story. And especially when you talk about how you want your story to end, how you want to see yourself in the future in five or 10 years, um, maybe it's also good for you to make a vision board, either written with words or with a mind map, or you can do it, uh, you can do a visualization with pictures, make a collage of pictures in order to have your personal vision board, not only for the next month, but maybe for the entire next year, so that you always are reminded visually um, what you want to do and where you want to go. Another great tip here is to use passwords on the computer which um, remind you or which are a positive phrase, a positive affirmation. So for example, if you have the positive affirmation, 
I attract a lot of money, then you can take the first letters of each word, like I, A, etc., and then make a number at the end of it, and you have a password. And every time you type in that password, you automatically say that affirmation in your mind. So I think that's a good advice for your money. So dear Scorpio, I hope you liked the reading. If you did, like, comment, share, and I hope to see you next time. I'm doing weekly readings for you guys all November because it's your birthday month. By the way, happy birthday if this is your birthday week. And I'll see you next time. Bye.